we'll continue with the classification methods uh, and now we'll, we'll be talking about linear discriminant analysis. We're going to uh, use the bone mineral density data set that includes 169 patients. Uh, here the objective is going to be to predict fracture, the variable fracture, hip fracture, based on other uh, covariates. In particular, we're going to look at uh, bone mineral density as a predictor for fracture. Uh, we've seen before that uh, in logistic regression, we model directly the probability of, of each category of the outcome based on a set of covariates. Um, one of the examples that we've seen was to model the probability of fracture given a value for the bone mineral density. In linear discriminant analysis, we're going to consider an, uh, an alternative approach to evaluate this probability. We're going to actually use the Bayes theorem to flip the above conditional probability, the probability of y given x. And you may recall that uh, uh, from Bayes theorem, the probability of y given x can be written as the probability of x given y times the probability of y divided by the probability of x. There's actually a uh, uh, slightly abuse of notation here because I'm going to assume that the covariate x or covariates uh, x um, are all continuous. So this probability of x equals uh, uh, x little x is actually the, the density of uh, f. So it should be written as f of x for different categories of k. Um, and the other quantity in the numerator is this, this pro probability, this margin probability of each category of, uh, um, of the outcome. So I'm going to assume that the distribution of x is normal uh, with a certain mean and certain variance. Okay, um, and then we can extend this to multiple covariates, multiple predictors, and in that case I'm going to assume that the distribution of these multiple predictors is actually multivariate normal uh, with a certain vector of means and a certain covariance matrix. So remember that uh, we just need to find the which of the probabilities for the different categories of, of k is the highest one. And then we can classify the unit uh, with the category that has the highest probability. So for example, um, if the probability of fracture uh, given a bone mineral density of 0.54 is higher than probability of not fracture, then I will classify the, the individual as a fracture. And I don't need specifically to uh, estimate this probability. Just the fact that I know that one probability is either higher than the other, it's enough to make this classification. Now, by assuming a normal distribution for the covariate x, um, I can show that finding the category of, of y that has the highest probability, so this probability over here, is exactly the same as finding the category of y that has the highest value in this expression, which is called discriminant function. I'm not going to, to, to uh, the, make the proof of this. In the book, you can find some hints about how to derive this. But basically, you can uh, see that in this expression, the denominator is going to be a constant because it's just the probability of the, uh, the marginal probability or the marginal density of the covariate. And so we want to, to maximize the numerator and we can maximize the numerator. We can, it's equivalent to maximize the log of this numerator. So you're going to have the log of the normal distribution here. And this is going to be, give rise to this part here of this equation and plus the log of the marginal distribution of y, which is this part of the uh, discriminant function. Okay, so basically, again, uh, finding the, the category with the highest probability is equivalent to finding the, the category with the highest value in discriminant function. And this is quite straightforward to do because we just need some estimates for the parameters in the discriminant function. And the, the parameters here are going to be the means of the, 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 the predictor um, for each category of uh, the outcome, uh, the, the weighted variance, an estimated uh, variance that's going to be the weighted variance uh, between the categories of the, the covariate, and also um, the relative 
frequency, so the proportion of individuals in each category of the, uh, the outcome. Okay, so let's see in the example of uh, bone mineral density and fracture. So what we need to estimate is the average the average BMD for the group of fracture and non-fracture. And we need to get an estimate of the variance for the bone mineral density, the BMD, the predictor of fracture. Um, and finally, uh, the proportion of individuals in the fracture and non-fracture group. Okay, so you can just easily get the, the proportion of individuals in fracture and non-fracture group. So I have about 30% of fractures. And I can also easily compute um, the, the mean of the BND for each one of the groups, fracture and non-fracture, okay? And finally, uh, I can write the expression for um, the, the variance of, uh, of the bone mineral density, which is going to be a weighted, um, uh, a weighted mean of the variances of the two groups. Um, you can see the formula in the, in the book, I believe in the page 141. Okay, so with these quantities, I can replace these quantities in the, um, in the discriminant function. And for example, for a bone mineral density of 0.54, uh, the discriminant function would have a value of 7.38 for the fracture group. And for the non-fracture group, it have, would have a value of 5.55. So because the fracture group has a higher value, uh, I would classify uh, an individual with the BMD of 0 0.54 as having a fracture, okay? And this is pretty much it in terms of the, um, uh, the linear discriminant function. I can extend the, the, this idea for um, multiple predictors. As I said, I'll assume, instead of assuming that the distribution of the one predictor is normal, I'm going to assume that distribution of the, the joint distribution of all the predictors is a multivariate, uh, a multivariate normal with uh, a vector of means mu k, so a vector of means for each category of the, the outcome, and a covariance matrix um, uh, given here in the expression by uh, sigma. And again, I just need to get estimates for the, 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 the covariance matrix and the means uh, of the different covariates for each category of the outcome, and I can write uh, the, the linear discriminant function. There's also a very nice geometrical interpretation of the linear discriminant analysis. So consider the uh, two predictors VAR1 and VAR2 and we want to classify uh, these two groups, the, the blue dots and the, the red dots. So what the linear discriminant uh, analysis will do is to try to find the direction that maximizes the separation of the two groups and also minimizes the variability uh, between the, the, the two groups in a projection in a lower dimension. So let me show you how this works. So in this, in this direction, um, you have uh, uh, you know, some, somehow good separation of the groups. There's some red dots mixed with, uh, with uh, the, the, the blue dots. There's a large variability in this projection to this lower dimension, okay? So if I look at other directions, you can see that you know, in this direction, you maximize the separation, and also there's the the the, the, the variability is is really lower. So again, you see here the variability is increasing. The separation is not good. When I start going up in this line, uh, the variance var variance decreases, and separation is quite good. So actually, this is the direction that separates best separates the two groups and also minimizes. The, the the variability of the projection into this lower di di one dimension line, okay. Um, so this in this case, any uh, any value with com or any combination of uh, var one and var two in this area would be classified as red, and any combination of var one and var two in this area would be classified uh, as as blue. So in the bone mineral uh, uh, density example, using the BMD, so bone mineral density and age to classify fracture, I could do exactly the same exercise in terms of looking at, at uh, uh, the, the direction that maximizes the separation between the two groups while minimizing the, 
the, uh, the variance of the projection in a lower dimension and I would have something like this okay uh, and I could again uh, like in previous methods construct uh, the confusion matrix and that in this case would give me an error rate of 15 percent so I have these 16 cases out of 169 that are misclassified the model predicted that uh, in this fracture in these 15 fractures that uh, the individuals had no fracture and in these nine no fractures the model predicted that there were fractures okay if you recall this is uh, this error rate is identical to what we have obtained with logistic regression now the assumption in the linear discriminant analysis is that the covariance matrix um, is the same for the different categories of uh, the the outcome okay so I have different means of the predictors but I'm assuming that the variance is the same across the different categories of the outcome so if I relax that that assumption and I allow each category to have not only their own mean but only also their own uh, covariance matrix I can write the discriminant function but now I have some additional terms in particular I have this quadratic term in x and also this uh, uh, this uh, logarithm of the covariance matrix and because of this quadratic quad quadratic term this is called now the quadratic discriminant uh, function uh, and gives rise to what it's called quadratic discriminant analysis okay so it's very similar the idea um, but in terms of uh, classification areas you see now that the area is not is no longer uh, divided by a linear border it, this quadratic discriminant analysis allows for this type of borders okay this is represented with two covariates uh, and as before it's harder to represent geometrically with more than two covariates but the um, the idea is that the quadratic linear discriminant allows more flexible uh, uh, borders of classification in this case the error rate is still the same as the linear as a linear uh, discriminant analysis because basically there's nothing there's no observations in this area that would benefit from um, a different border